Um, so I, I appreciate you coming to join us. Um, I am Beverly McLean. I'm our the social media director for Covington Travel and our travel blogger. And then um, we will have some of our vacation advisors joining us also. Um, like I said, you're a, a, a single person, single audience of one today. So if you do have a mic, uh, you are welcome to just interrupt and talk anytime. We'll make this a conversation or just type into the chat box and we'll um, we'll talk to Norman. And so Norman's going to Norman Unbinder is president and CEO of American Excursionist. And like Covington, his company is a virtuoso member, which means you can rely on quality and professionalism at every step of an excursionist journey. Um, we know that a lot of our travelers aren't quite ready to go outside the US just yet. So we invited Norman to share some of the really interesting trips that American excursionist builds. So with that, let's see here. I'm going to give you over to Norman. Hello. Try. Wait a minute, I'm going to try to give you the oh shoot, what's going on? Sorry, Norman, hang on. No worries. Can you take the screen back over? Yeah, you can. There you go. Okay. Can you see that? You. Yep, I can. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, hi, Cam and Sharon and everyone. Nice to meet you all. Um, as I, as, um, as Beverly said, I'm Norman Einbinder. I'm with Excursionist. Uh, we are a luxury tour operator for the US, Canada, and the Caribbean. We work very closely with Covington Travel. Um, and the way that we work is that um, you as a client will come to Covington and we work together hand in hand to put together customized trips for your clients um, throughout the US, Canada, and the Caribbean. Um, obviously, given the uh, unprecedented times that we're in right now, we are looking at how we can offer new and unique um, offerings for the COVID era. And a lot of Covington's clients have come to them asking for, you know, specialized road trips and other things that might appeal now. Um, and so we wanted to kind of give you a quick overview of these new products that we're um, offering uh, and then, you know, take as many questions as you'd like. Um, so we've created a new brochure called On the Road Again, which is very appropriately kind of getting folks to think about getting back on the road and what that would entail now. Um, a little bit about us, um, the company is 10 years old. Um, I founded the company with two business partners. Uh, we are uh, based in Miami, but we have folks all over the US and Canada and the Caribbean that work for us. Um, I was mentioning that um, I grew up in Virginia, grew up in Norfolk. So I am uh, sort of, uh, from the, from the age of one, I, I lived in Virginia. My folks still live there. Um, went to uh, UVA for both undergrad and, and, and graduate school. So um, I am a, a who and uh, very proudly Virginia. And then uh, moved up to, to, to Arlington um, for for first 10 years of my life. So I do know the state very well. I was just staying in Charlottesville during the COVID thing and uh, visited Richmond um, while I was there. Um, so we, we know you where you guys live and and understand the geography and where you're you know how where you're trying to go in this time. Um, as a company, you know I want to kind of mention that, you know we provide um, expertise on the ground for you know, planning a trip. So essentially, when you're ready to go somewhere, uh, we have people on the ground. We only offer experiences, hotels, and tours that we know um, and that are really you know focused on, on areas that we're, we're experts in. We have a lot of very unique bespoke experiences that we offer. Um, everything we do is bespoke, everything we do is customized. So if you have a family and your kids are interested in canyoneering, we've got canyoneering experts. If you're interested in history, we have historians. Um, we can get folks back behind the scenes of museums and um, a lot of different you know, private experiences as well. Uh, we try to provide unparalleled value because of not only great rates that we have with hotels, but also all the experiences. And I think the most important thing during this sort of crisis is that we provide 24 seven concierge support. So that means is when you're on the road, you have someone that is dealing with you from the beginning to the end. 
um, who essentially supports everything that you do. If you have a question on safety, if you have um, a concern about something, you literally have them on speed dial to support you. If you want to change your tour that day, um, if you want bookings for restaurants, we do all of that as part of your package when you book with us. Um, I do want to mention that for the COVID um, response, we've worked very diligently to provide um, very, very um, careful health and safety standards and practices. We have hired an epidemiologist on staff to uh, create our policies. And when it comes to the hotels that we are booking, as well as the guides and the transportation services, um, everything is very much focused on your safety. Um, we are only offering private tours and tours with um, guides and drivers that we know well. Um, and we're very much checking all of the protocols of our partners to make sure that they are following uh, CDC guidelines and much more than that. And we're also offering a flexible and worry-free cancellation policy so that you can book with, with uh, sort of, you know, lack of worry that if something changes uh, in this new environment that, you, that you're always able to, um, you know, get out of it and, 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 and change your trip or get a refund. Um, we offer a lot of different modes of transportation for your trip. Um, so clients, you know, could self-drive, meaning they could get in their own car and start driving and go do their road trip on their own in their own vehicle. In that case, um, we would put together the road trip, the hotels, the tours, and you would use your own vehicle. Um, we can also provide rentals. Um, so if you are looking to rent a vehicle, we can do that for you. Um, if you're looking for someone to drive you, we do have chauffeur driver guides that can drive you throughout your trip. That could be from your doorstep, or it could be that you fly somewhere and then um, essentially we we pick you up whenever you arrive and take care of the rest. Um, we can book private aviation. Obviously, not everyone um, wants to book their own private jets, but we have a number of different options. Some are much more affordable than you might think. And some people are looking to avoid commercial air completely, um, and that can be an option for some people. Um, we are offering a lot of motorhome rentals now. Um, the ones that we focus on are the luxury ones. So these are the larger vehicles that they have a driver, um, but we also do have compact RVs that can be driven by you. Um, there are limits in terms of what's available in the Virginia area to, 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 to rent, but we can always bring an RV to you if, um, if that is something that you're needing. Um, it does affect the price, but it is something that is possible. Um, and then I have a question about that. Sure. Um, I was wondering what if, if you have an RV, if you have a driver for one of these big motor coaches uh, or RVs, um, where does the driver stay when you're camping? Yeah, so typically the driver um, will set you up for the evening um, or, or for whatever you're doing and then essentially they'll hitch a ride with an Uber or find a way to get a taxi. Um, and they will stay at a local hotel in the in the nearby area. Um, oh. uh, in some cases, they've even um, camped out. So if you're out in the middle of the <laughs> park, but you want your RV driver nearby, they'll camp out. You know, maybe you know. So you have your privacy as a family, but they are you know nearby if you need anything. Um, so we've done you know a number. But obviously, we want the driver to give the family. Um, privacy where they need it, but be there if they need to deal with, you know, the AC's broken or, you know, they need to fix the satellite TV and, you know, for, for the evening. So um, the nice thing. That's, That's like the best of both worlds. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. And to have a driver because uh, I actually grew up traveling in a Winnebago quite a lot. I mean, literally all 50 states, we went all the time. And it was a big one. And i am tell you what, those things are not, I mean, I never drove it because I was a kid, but, um, you know, there's a, there, it's kind of challenging to drive a big thing like that. And I think that might be kind of a barrier for some people being afraid of driving a big one. It is, it is a barrier. And the nice thing about having the ones that are bigger is they really do have room for everybody. Um, you know, they have a bedroom in the back, uh, you know, for the parents, they have uh, multiple beds, they have a nice bathroom. Um, so they are, they are very roomy. They're just big. And so having a driver that's going to take care of, um, you know, dealing with the waste management and the hookups and, you know, getting them into wherever they want. The nice thing about the big ones is they have big generators, so they can be parked 
without, you know, the, the nice thing about an RV park is you've got the services. The bad thing about an RV park is you're in an RV park. So having, having um, you know, being able to set up inside of a national park at a, at, a, at a very remote destination for the night can be really beautiful. You set up your barbecue, you set up your slide outs and you're, you know, and, and you really are like, you know, glamping in the full, full way there. So um, there's a lot of advantages. And the nice thing about the driver is they literally can um, bring the RV right to, you know, the doorstep in, of the clients, pick them up right from where they live um, and take them on the journey. They don't have to go anywhere. Um, so it, it, it's for those that are really worried about, you know, safety, you've got someone who's, you know, picking you up from day one and you're not doing anything. So um, it is a nice, it is a nice option. Well, I certainly have fond memories of that kind of travel. So I, it sounds wonderful to me. I, I would do it in a heartbeat. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then I'd like to mention that we've got a lot of very unique accommodations, especially for right now where people are looking to be more remote. Um, we work with a number of beautiful remote lodges. You know, those are in places like Alaska, um, you know, Nova Scotia, uh, you know, Montana. Um, so a lot of remote lodges and remote places that are either in mountains or deserts um, where clients can really be, um, you know, very, very remote uh, where they are. Um, we work with a lot of luxury dude ranches. These range from the really, really, you know, fancy ones to much more sort of, you know, you know, you're really doing the work to you kind of like go horseback riding and everybody else does everything else for you. But we have those in you know, Texas and uh, Colorado, BC, Alberta, New Mexico, Wyoming, and Montana. Um, we do work with a lot of tented camps. These are more permanent sort of glamping options. And then for those that want to book their own private home or estate, um, we do have access to these in a lot of different you know places, Hawaii, um, Colorado, we are adding more even in places like Miami. So there are, you know, for those that don't feel comfortable in a hotel, we do have more options for them in private homes. Um, of course, boutique resorts and, and lots of really charming little hotels and inns, such as those that you might find in, in New England. Um, so, um, you know, one option that it is really interesting for some people would be the glamping camps. Um, we set these up. These are real glamping. This isn't, you know, fake glamping. So you are in inside the national parks in many cases. You um, are completely remote and away from anyone else. You have your own guides and your own chef and your own crew, and we set everything up for you. But you are, you know, you're sleeping in a comfortable bed with a real mattress. You have your own bathroom connected to your tent with a, you know, flushing composting toilet. Uh, but you, you know, you don't have electricity. Everything you are really in nature. So you've got the best of both worlds. You really are camping, but you also are, you know, you've got all the luxuries there. So. Um, we, we love these. I mean, they are not inexpensive because essentially you have to set them up from scratch. You've got to bring in all the equipment. You've got to bring in multiple tents and multiple beds and all that, but they are a great option to combine on a road trip. Let's say with, you know, other national parks or with some of the other properties that we work with as a great option, you know, for your, for your clients. Um, with the, uh, with the glamping camp set up, how, what kind of staff is there? You're bringing in, I mean, there's some cooking staff, obviously, uh, two, three people. Typically, it, it starts with two, three people. So you've got your your chef and you've got an attendant that takes care of everything. Um, but obviously, we can add more staff depending on what you want to do. Most folks, if they're going to go and do that, they also want to do some adventures. So if you're in Yellowstone, typically, you'll have a private guide with a vehicle who is with you as well. And, and, and that person will take you out into Yellowstone for day trips, for kayaking, for adventures. If you're in Zion, you take the canyoneering. Um, the size of the crew really depends on how much activity you want to do. Typically, it's a minimum of, you know, two to three people just there to help you set, they, they, they're there to take care of you while you're there to cook for you. But if you want, you know, adventure activities, then we typically have more staff there as, as well. Okay. And we love, I mean, the one, the Grand Canyon North is really unique because, you know, the North Rim of the Grand Canyon is the least uh, touristed. This is a very remote part of the, of the area. So you're literally on the edge of the canyon, but you're very much in the wilderness. 
So these are not permanent camps. They're per they're sites, but they're not permanent tents oh, there. Exactly. They're all um, permitted that we get just for the, and that is kind of part of the expense is that they're not already set up. They are, you know, leave no trace in the national parks. You, you, you know, when they're done, we have to take everything down, get everything out of there. So they're just set up for the client and then, you know, rebuilt when, when we have a next client. Um, so everything is set up just for the clients. Okay. Sounds fabulous. Yeah, it's a great option. Um, and then, you know, we've got our road trips. So these are ideas for different trips for different parts of the country. Um, I'll go kind of quickly through them. You know, obviously the Southwest National Parks um, is a great trip. I mean, obviously if you're in Virginia, it is a long drive to start, um, you know, if your clients are comfortable flying and more and more, you know, clients are comfortable. Um, you can fly into, um, uh, to uh, Phoenix um, and then do this whole loop um, and end in Grand Junction, or you can do a, a sort of a, a circle with starting in Phoenix and ending in Vegas. Um, so you're not, you know, you may have one to two direct flights, but most of it is still a full road trip. A great loop, um, fantastic options. Um, one of our favorite places. All these places are now open, completely, you know, ready for clients. And already we have clients traveling here. Um, this next one is um, the Badlands. Um, you know, this, sorry, um, this is Badlands to Yellowstone. So Mount Rushmore, Buffalo, Cody, Yellowstone, and then out of Jackson Hole. Again, you could drive, you know, get to, to South Dakota, it's a long trip. Um, but again, it may be one where your client, you know, where you guys want to, um, you know, get a luxury RV, have a driver, you know, stop along the way and do some really interesting touring across country and then do this part of the trip and then fly back out of Jackson Hole. Or you may want to fly, you know, in and out of, you know, Rapid City and then out of, of Jackson Hole. So, you know, a great time to be in, 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 Mount Rushmore, great time to be in Yellowstone, um, and and it's a great, you know, beautiful trip right now. Um, the next one is, is Yellowstone back open yet? It is. It is. It's just opened up, hadn't it? Yeah. Yeah. All of the um, all of the entrances of Yellowstone are open. In fact, all the major national parks that we work in are now open, except for Yosemite, which opens, I believe, next week. So um, we're really excited because essentially all the parks are now open. Um, and, and taking, you know, and, and we're able to support clients in all those places. Um, coastal New England is great. I mean, you know, I'll talk about the, um, you know, the Appalachian Trail trip, but, you know, you can get north and, and do New England. This one has you going to Rhode Island, to Ocean House, and then Cape Cod, um, then up to Ogunquit in Maine and ending in Bar Harbor with Acadia National Park. This is absolutely gorgeous in the summer. Um, you can fly back out from uh, from Bangor, Maine, um, or from Portland. So it is something that you know if you wanted to pick up a rental car and drive one way and then fly back the the, the you know the other way, um, that is possible. Um, the next one is the Maritimes. That's a great trip in in um, uh, Halifax. You know all the all the Prince Edward Island, New Brunswick. Uh, this one I would say is more for starting in August when the border with Canada opens. So that border is not open yet, but again, late, late August, September, a great trip in the Maritimes. Um, California is really starting to reopen. A lot of our hotels have reopened and um, you know, you've got Napa and Sonoma, you've got, um, you know, Lake Tahoe, Yosemite and Monterey and Big Sur, you know, absolutely gorgeous trip there. Um, Oregon um, is starting to reopen and that's an incredible trip. Um, the Rocky Mountains, so Colorado to New Mexico is a fantastic option. Um, the Deep South, you know, obviously getting yourself across to, um, from Virginia to, let's say, Kentucky is not very far. And then driving down to Nashville, Memphis, Natchez, and then ultimately New Orleans. Um, that's a great trip through the Deep South, really focused on music, um, 
food, culinary, it's a great destination. Um, this is the one that we were talking about that really um, is kind of ideal for someone living in Virginia. This is really following the Appalachian Trail and avoiding, you know, 95 and, and going up north that way. Um, obviously, the Appalachian Trail starts in, 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 in Georgia and goes all the way to Maine. If someone wanted to do the drive and follow the whole route, they could, but they could also start, you know, in Virginia and go north or go south. Um, you know, we've got a lot of great touring along the way. You, can, you know, the, the trail goes through Gettysburg. It goes through the Poconos. It goes to the Hudson Valley. You can avoid New York City and then go through the Berkshires and, and up to the, the, the Green Mountains and up to Maine. So this is a great trip. You can obviously do as much or as little of it as possible as you want, but great hiking, great history. Um, you know, we have Civil War historians, Civil War battlefields. Um, a lot of interesting stops along the way that people might not even be aware of. And, and um, you know, I actually hiked part of the trail even during COVID. Um, some of, you know, app, the um, Shenandoah National Park was closed, but parts of the trail were still open. And it's, you know, it's just stunning, stunning scenery and a great family trip. So Norman, on these, um, these routes that you've just shown us, are these, uh, for lack of a better word, suggested routes, and you have suggested hotels along these ways. And, right. and okay, so and but it's but it's really geared to be a self-drive type thing. This one is, or, a, or with a driver. Yeah, I mean, this one is. I mean, I would say that you know probably if you're going to do this one, it's probably better to do it as a self-drive and then stop at properties. I mean, you could get a luxury RV, but. Um, you know, we've built this to be more of a self drive and um, the distances aren't, you know, the, the drive, you know, the, the if you want to do the whole thing, it is, a you know, a lot of distance, but the distances between luxury properties is not that big. Um, there's some beautiful properties um, in Pennsylvania. There's beautiful properties, obviously, even in Virginia, there's um, uh, Primland, which is in, in southern Virginia. There's um, you know, properties in West Virginia, there's amazing, there's a great property near Gettysburg. Um, so we have properties all along the way to look to connect it. So you're, you know, you don't need to be driving more than two or three hours a day, stopping along the way for a couple of days, doing some touring, staying at some beautiful properties, and then keep going. You know, you don't have to do the whole trail, you could do a part of it and, and make it a two week trip just to, you know, a few a few of the states so at your own pace right so your excursionist trips are in no way uh group trips they are individually planned and executed correct okay correct. thank correct. you just want to make sure of that absolutely oh and norman um cam did ask a question about the rvs does it require a special driver's license to drive an rv it does not and surprisingly even the big 45 foot uh part you know uh rock star buses they also do not require a cdl so um we do you know we will from if you're if you've got a client that really feels comfortable they will bring the rv right to your home or to wherever you end up if you want to fly to vegas and pick it up in vegas we will bring it there and the the person dropping it off will give you a two to three hour tutorial on you know how to deal with the the waste and you know all the buttons and the and you know the TV and everything, but you know obviously you can't teach somebody how to drive a forty five foot RV in three hours <laughs> if they don't want to. But there is no no commercial license required. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, and then you know some other trips we have. You know again, if someone does want to do private charter, we can do private charters of the national parks. Um, Hawaii is a destination that we work in. It doesn't have to be private jet. It can be just flying commercial. Um, we do a lot in Hawaii. Um, they have extended their quarantine through the end of July, which we expected, but we think that by um, August, Hawaii will be up and running and great destination. Obviously, if you can't leave the U.S. for some incredible nature and hi history and touring and, and a, lot of, um, a lot of great nature. Um, and then we really want to tell people, you know, if you're now is the time to go to Alaska. Um, it is, you know, typically very hard to get into Alaska. You need to book a year in advance usually. And because of what's going on, it is very, um, you know, it is, there is room. And we recommend, you know, doing some water activities and then going up and staying at a remote lodge 
but you know, fantastic year for for Alaska if the, if folks are you know <laughs> looking to do that um, as well. So, and then you know, obviously celebrations and retreats. If people want to, you know, didn't they didn't get to celebrate that big milestone birthday or that wedding? Um, we can do you know everything from a private island in the Bahamas to a multi generational um, house in Maui to a, to a remote fishing lodge in um, Montana where you know a big family multi generational family could get together completely stay away from the crowds and anyone else and um, you know and do and do their own thing so that is um, us in a nutshell I will sort of leave it for any other question I know we have a few new people. Who join? Yes, we have a couple of more. Anybody have any questions for Norman? If you uh, can't use your mic, you can type right into the chat box. I just love Norman the focus on um, the nature and the gorgeous resources that we have right here in America, um, and I think that really ties in right now with. People's, um, you know, the, the, we have a lowered confidence of travel. We're 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 a little hesitant to, you know, jet off to Europe right now. Although I do have a trip planned in October, I'm planning to go if as long as they're going to let me, I'm going to go. Um, but I just think we have yeah, so absolutely. many wonderful national parks and just gorgeous places, and this is such a nice way to see them in in luxury. That's certainly absolutely. the best way. Well, yeah, I mean, we, you know, it's funny, a lot of people put, you know, the national parks and, and some of these other areas as on their like bucket list to do later in life. And, um, you know, certainly they, they sort of say, oh, we'll get back to that at some point. But, you know, in some ways, if you are comfortable traveling right now, um, it is the best time to go because, you know, even, even though there is more domestic tourism now because folks aren't going overseas, it's still, um, you know, it's still not going to be the level of of um, of people that are normally in a place like Yellowstone or a place like Alaska. So you've got less crowds. Um, you know, these are places that you know didn't have a lot of COVID cases. Um, you know, they're very remote, and you know they're just absolutely beautiful. You know, places to go, and and we are able to make them you know more luxurious. They don't have to be. Um, you know, they don't have to be kind of rough it and do it yourself. And then in terms of, you know, some of the cultural stuff, I mean, you know, people are going off to Asia and, you know, India and Europe and South America, and they do forget that we've got a lot of interesting, you know, cultural things, um, you know, in our own backyard, whether it be our, you know, historical sites, um, you know, Native American stuff, uh, Louisiana, you know, going out in the bayou uh, and doing stuff like that. There are some really fascinating um, cultural and learning experiences to be had for for clients, um, you know, in your own backyard. So we're able to to make their trips um, very much like they would have if they were to go off to Europe or somewhere else this summer. Um, so definitely uh, would love for people to keep that in mind. And you know, it can always be it can always to them. I think Cam had another question. Um, Cam asked uh, about the says, Yeah, you got it. Yeah, good time, to see, a the good time to see the northern lights in Alaska. Yeah, anytime from um, from late September all the way through um, April and May. Um, so there's a couple different ways to see the northern lights. Um, we do work with some properties that are pretty remote. Um, and they're pretty good likelihood of seeing them. Um, but the other op option is to go up to Fairbanks. Um, and there are, you know, a lot of different different hotels and different ways to do it. Um, you always have to keep in mind that that you need time for the northern lights. Uh, because if you've got a cloudy couple of days, you know, you're not going to you're going to be disappointed. So the best thing I, I always say is to try to plan a a more you know comprehensive trip that includes dog mushing that includes um, a lot of other touring um, and so you're not just going there and sitting around waiting for the northern lights for four days um, if you see them great if you don't you still had an incredible winter adventure in alaska um, so you know any any time you know sort of october and and beyond is is good uh, that obviously the further north you go uh, the more likely you're going to to have a good a good view. 
That's wonderful. That would, yeah, they say, um, I saw something the other day said Alaska is the ultimate and the original social distancing because, because they have so much space and so few people for that space. It is true. It is true. All right. Do we have any other questions? If not, um, I will say thank you so much, Norman. I really appreciate all this great information. We have recorded this webinar, so we'll be able to share it with uh, some of our other folks. And uh, if anybody online has other questions, see your advisor and they will get those answers for you. So thank, well, thank you all you. very much for joining us. Thank you, Norman, appreciate it. And uh, everybody stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, bye. Bye.